Welcome to today's live video, live Facebook Live. <laughs> and today we're talking about how would I go about creating the world I want? Quite a big question, huh? How would I go about creating the world I really want? So we're going to explore that today. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I'm the founder of Answering the Call and the creator of Wisdomary Leading, which is an approach to living life based on our understanding of uh, our current understanding of reality based on science as well as the great wisdom traditions. And every week we do these, uh, or almost every week we have these sessions. So welcome. If you're here live, please say hi. I love knowing you're here. And if you're watching this on replay, please put hashtag replay in the comments. And if you have any comments or questions now or any time, please post them and I will get back to you. All right, so let's get started. How would I go about creating the world I want? So we're going to explore who or what the I is. How do I know what I want? And what does it mean to create the world if I want, the, sorry, <laughs> what does it mean to create the world I want if there is no separate I? Because that's what we talk about here all the time, right? And answering the call, we answer the call to know who we truly are. And then as we explore that, we realize, oh, there's no separate self to create anything. There's no I that's creating anything or doing anything. I'm being lived. Life is living through me, expressing through me, or, or, sorry, through this body-mind. As this body mind, there's not this separate I. Just like the ocean and waves, we would never say that a wave is separate from the ocean. Impossible. Same thing. We are not separate from consciousness or the one being that we all are. It'd be like separating, trying to separate the, the wave from the ocean. Impossible. So, since there's no separate I, so who, what, then, so, but I'm saying who or what the I is, 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 is the, no, is knowing that, that there is no separate I, that there is a unique expression of consciousness that each of these body minds is. We, uh, we are made out of consciousness, arise out of consciousness, are consciousness, express consciousness. That's all that's ever happening is consciousness expressing itself. So that's who the I is. Other names for that are, so consciousness, also awareness, one being, God's infinite being is the religious name. Other names, source, spirit, um, infinite wisdom, infinite intelligence. Whatever name you have for it, that's what the I is. But all of those names, as you can see, is everything. Everything. So that's what the I is. So if there is no separate self to know what I want, now we think we know what we want. We've been conditioned to believe that we're a separate self. So we listen to thoughts that appear to us and believe them. And our thoughts seem to tell us a lot of things that we want. It's all conditioning. All conditioning. Uh, and nobody's done anything wrong. I'm not at all saying anybody's done anything wrong or you know, it's done purposefully to deceive us. Nothing like this. It's just what has occurred is that we've been conditioned since birth and our parents before us and their parents, their parents, all of, almost all of the world has been conditioned to believe there's a separate self and that there's a separate self that knows what that separate self wants. Okay, but if we're not a separate self, then how do I know what the one being wants and that this body mind is here to uniquely express? So, the, so how do I know that? Well, first is to know the difference between when this seeming separate self wants something and the consciousness that expressing through me is giving me guidance for what I want or what is wanted through me. So we can tell when the belief in the separate self is what is uh, informing us if, we, if, it's, uh, if, if what we want is from a place of lack, like, oh, I don't have enough money, I better get some more money, or um, fear or... Um, uh, 
trying to make ourselves happy, like, oh, I don't like this job I have. I've got to find a better job. I'll be happier there. Or I find a different relationship. That'll make me happy. Or um, read a book. That'll make me feel better. Or go take a walk. That'll make me feel better. Nothing wrong with reading a book. Nothing wrong with changing jobs. Nothing wrong with uh, taking a walk. It's what what's the motivation behind it. So if what I want, or, or let's say I also want to create the world I want, which is the, the topic today, then we can say, well, I don't want any more war. I don't want any more, I want peace. I want love. I want um, everybody to have a wonderful life. And so it depends on what's motivating that. If it's because we believe war is wrong, if we believe um, that I know best, that the sense of a separate self knows best and what's best for everybody, if I, um, uh, yeah, I guess that's mainly it. If, I, if I'm trying to change something, like all these people shouldn't be suffering and dying, but if it's from an egoic place, this is where it's so nuanced here, is that at some level we know that people being mistreated is totally inconsistent with who we are. So is it that sort of feeling, that deep compassion, like this is just off. This just isn't who we are. It's not in alignment with life. Or is it from a judgmental? These people are awful to be treating people this way. These people don't know what they're, I mean, they, I say, I don't want to say that. Um, these people are uh, terrorists and, and uh, you know if we're working with labels if we're working with um, you know they're horrible people um, all of that is telling us that a sense of a separate self is, is involved because we're judging people we're judging um, we're judging people and we can judge their acts like acts of terrorism yeah those are bad but saying the people who commit them, that they're bad people, means we don't understand who we truly are. We are those terrible people. We are. We're one being. That's an aspect of us acting in that way. But we can know what's occurring is inconsistent with who we are. And that, that, and that those activities are, um, you know... Um, we can know from compassion that that's just doesn't have to happen. So it depends on where we're acting from. So let's say we're acting from, we can really feel that compassionate like with everybody, the terrorists as well as the the victims, the people being terrorized. And I don't mean victims in a, oh, I'm a poor victim, but I mean the, the what happens, the other half of perpetrator is there's a victim. So, so I can open my heart to both the terrorists and the victims and know, oh, this, this just doesn't have to be occurring in the world and act from that place. But there's no judgment. There's no making wrong of anybody or anything. It's, but there's a sense of I, there's something for me to do here. It could even be picking up a gun and going to fight with somebody. If it's truly, truly that sense of knowing that this is what I'm here to do. The, the I'm not an expert at this, so if I say this incorrectly, let me know. But the, I mean, I might say this part incorrectly, the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> anyway, the, in the, the, the story is that there was a particular uh, man that knew that he was, he, was, he, he was being called to go to battle, but he didn't want to go to battle, but that happened to be his role in life. And the angels, I think it was angels, helped him see that that's what was in front of him to do. So that's a version of what I'm talking about here. He he knew that was his role and what was he was to do. And and so, but we can feel that it's different than judgment. I got to make them wrong. I've got to go kill a bunch of people. You know, they're terrible people. That's that's not what we're talking about here today. Um, but if it's a sense of of I've got some peacemaking to make in the world, so I'm not the gun holder anymore, but I'm seeing oh, there, I want to, I want to be in the world in a way that peace is being created. That's the world I want, that everybody's fed and that everybody belongs. And so then I can be inspired to, to know that that's, 
that's what I'm here to do. So that's, um, so that's, uh, so how do I know what I want? That's how. There's a sense. There's a knowing. And it's not egoic. Egoic, we're going to feel tightness, constriction, maybe anger, angst. Those sorts of things are motivating us. So what does it mean to create the world I want if there is no separate I? So it is everything that we're talking about so far. And then this, and then no, um, things come to us to do. We don't have to worry about knowing what to do. They will come to us. Now, they might not come in our time. There's a story of Gandhi that he'd been, you know, he's very famous at this point. He'd been leading his movement, and then all of a sudden he didn't know what to do. So he spun wool, I think it was wool, for three months. And then all of a sudden he knew what to do. Of course, that's how it's portrayed in the movie. It might not be quite literal, but it might be. He was spinning wool for three months and then all of a sudden oh now I know what to do so that's what I'm talking about that it will come to us is if we stay in the question we have a sense there's something to do here I don't quite know what it is to do yet but I'm gonna listen I'm gonna pay attention and it will come to us okay I'll see if there are any questions or comments and then I'll recap what we're doing here hi Diane so glad you're here. So if you have any questions or comments, please post them. I will come back to that in a minute. So again, to recap, how would I go about creating the world I want? So again, the I that I'm referring to here is the I that knows it's not separate. And, um, and, that, uh, and so is operating from that place. The I that's judging or that is... Um, righteous that's not the I that I'm talking about that's a sense of a separate self that is actually an illusion it's not real it's a belief it's a thought so what the I is is one being and as such we still express as in this human experience and and if we know who we are then we're more and more aligning our actions our relationships our activities our conversations and then as well, our thoughts and emotions line up too with who we truly are. So the I is the one being. And how do I know what I want? I'm, I'm paying attention to those nudges, those senses, the sensing, not like not the five senses, but the sensing, there's a sense, there's something for me to do here. You'll know that it's not, you'll know that it's the sense of a separate self wanting to do something when it's when it comes from a place of lack, judgment, fear, uh, righteousness, that's not who you truly are. So you you know what you want when there's just a sense, there's something catches your attention, there's a a knowing for you to do. And then so what does it mean to create the world I want if there's no separate I? Well, you're listening, you're knowing, and then and then you. Take action consistent with what comes to you, what informs you, what moves you. When we're not paying attention to our thoughts and our feelings and we're the open space who we, that we truly are, all kinds of possibilities can come to us, all kinds of imaginings, all kinds of things that we've never thought of before when we're trying to use our thinking mind, our separate self mind to figure something out. That's all going to be in alignment with what we already know, what we already do. So if we want new and innovative, um, exciting uh, uh, possibilities for what's next, then we're not listening to our thoughts, we're not listening to our feelings, but we're staying open, and then the ideas will come out of nowhere. I mean, they might come from something you read in the book, but you can sense, oh, that's for me to notice. Or a conversation, or it can be, yeah, just an idea that comes out of the blue. Oh, wow, wouldn't have thought of that. So that's what it means to create the world I want if there's no separate I, is that listening and then taking action consistent with that, or having conversations, which is a form of action consistent with that. And then I keep take one step at a time. One step, I'll know what to do next when it shows up. I'll know what to do next when it shows up. And often, it's kind of rapid going. It'll You'll know, and then you'll know, and you'll know. And sometimes, like Gandhi, it can be a while where you're staying in that open, trusting, listening space because you know that when it's appropriate, it will come to you what to do. So I'll see if we have any other 
Oh, thank you, Diane. I'm so glad you love this. Um, thanks for telling me that. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you're here. Okay, so that is uh, it for today. Let me just double check if there's anything else. Um, nope, that covers all my notes for today. Uh, also, want to remind you that uh, I have an upcoming complimentary workshop next Tuesday, the 13th, from 11.30 to 1 Central Time, and it's... Uh, it's about all of this. It's how to, it's freeing ourselves from the illusion of the separate self so that we're free to experience everything we're talking about today. Ideas, possibility, the flow of the universe, love, abundance, um, happiness. So please join us next Wednesday. I will put some more information in the comments as soon as this is over. And I hope you'll join us next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have a great rest of your day.